बलदेवा जय सुभद्रा शिशि गोरानी थीता गोरा हरी बो हरी बो हरी बो नीता गोरा हरी बो जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी
Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Shodanandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashodanandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashodanandana Braja Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhadha Gopi Chana Bala Bhagiri Bhadhari Yashodanandana Prajajanaran Chana Yashodanandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yashodanandana Praja Jana Ranjana Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सरस्वती व्यासम तथो जयम धीरय न्यस्त प्रयेशु बभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवति नष्ट की रीडिंग श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टेन चैप्टर नंबर सेवेंटी इन थाइटोड लॉर्ड कृष्णस डेली एक्टिविटीज एंड दिस मॉर्निंग वेर ऑन टेक्स नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन लोके भवन जगदीना कलयावती लोके भवन जगदीना कल कलयावतीद्रक्षा कल निग्रहनाय चन्याद्रक्षा कल निग्रहनाय चन्याचिथ्वीयम अतियति निदेशम ईशा कस्चिथ्वीय अतियति निदेशम ईशा किनस्वाकृतम रिछति तन्ना विद्म किं वाजन स्वाकृत कृचति तन्ना विद्म लोके भवन जगदीना कल कलयावतीद्रक्षा कल निग्रहाय चन्याचिथ्वीय अतियति निदेशम ईशा किं रिचति तन्ना विद्म लोके भवन जगदीना कलयावतीर्ना 
sadrakshanaya kala negrahanaya chanya Kaschitvadiyam atiyati nidisham isha Kimvajana svakritam rijati tanavidma Predominator. Kalaya. Kalaya. With your expansion, Baladeva, or with your time potency. Avatirna. Having descended, Sat, the saintly. Rakshanaya, Rakshanaya to protect, to protect. Kala, Kala the wicked, the wicked. Nigrahanaya, Nigrahanaya subdue, subdue. Chya and Anya, Anya. Anya. Other, other Kaschit someone Tvadiyam, your, your atiyati, atiyati, transgressors, transgressors. Nidesham, nidesham, 
the law, the law. Isha. Isha. Isha, O Lord, o Lord. Kimva, Kimva. Or, else. or else, Jana, Jana. A, person. a person. Wait, I got it. <laughs> Swa by himself. Swa by himself. Kritam. Kritam. Created. Created. Richati. Richati. Obtains. Obtains. And then finally, Natama. We do not understand. Translation. You are the predominating Lord of the universe and have descended into the world with your personal power to protect the saintly, to protect the saintly and suppress the wicked. We cannot understand, O oh Lord, how anyone can transgress your law and still continue to enjoy the fruits of his work purport by the commentators of Srimad Bhagavatam. Sridhar Swami explains that the kings were bewildered by the suffering that had come upon them. They state here that since the Lord has descended to this world to protect the pious and punish the wicked, how is it that Jarasand, who brazenly transgressed the order of the Lord, continued to perform his wicked activities, whereas the kings were put into a miserable condition? Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur similarly states that the kings could not understand how Jarasandha, who harassed the saintly devotees and nourished the envious, could continue to prosper, whereas the kings were being tormented by the wicked, by the wicked Jarasandha. Similarly, Srila Prabhupada quotes, qu quotes the kings as follows, in Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. My dear Lord, you are the pre proprietor of all the worlds and you have incarnated yourself along with your plenary expansion, Lord Balaram. It is said that your it is uh, it is said that your appearance in this incarnation is for the purpose of protecting the faithful and destroying the miscreants. Under the, no, under the circumstances, how is it possible that miscreants like Jarasandha can put us into such deplorable conditions of life 
against your authority. We are puzzled at the situation and cannot understand how it is possible. It may be that Jarasandha has been deputed to give us such trouble because of our past misdeeds. But we have heard that from revealed scriptures that anyone, that anyone, we have heard that anyone who surrenders unto your lotus feet immediately becomes immune to the reactions of sinful life. We therefore wholeheartedly offer ourselves unto your shelter and we hope that your Lordship will now give us full protection. Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patita Nam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So we're hearing how Jarasandha had arrested 20,000 kings and put them into prison and a messenger had come on behalf of the kings who had been imprisoned by Jarasandha. A messenger had come to Dwarka, to Lord Krishna, to request the help of Lord Krishna. So the messenger is describing the thinking of the kings. The kings are thinking, how is it possible that we're in the prison house and Jarasandha's enjoying? We're pious people, we're good people. And Jarasandha's a bad person, he's an evil guy. But he's the king and he's ruling and he's conquered us and he's put us into this hell in the prison. Why is it like that? It shouldn't be like this. You know, there was a famous book many years ago now. There was a famous book called Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? Remember that? <laughs> Hearing about that? Why the bad, you know, some rabbi had a son who was born with a very dehabilitating disease. You know, he, he grew, he aged very rapidly. So it was very painful for the rabbi to watch his son in that condition. And he was trying to explain why bad things sometimes happen to good people. In other, in other words, he thought, I'm a good person. Why does this happen to me? And similarly, the kings who are the prisoners of Jarasandha, they're thinking, we're good people. Why is this happening to us? Right? You think like that? So, Jarasandha, of course, is an interesting personality. Uh, it's certainly true that he, he, he associated with the envious. He was a friend of Kamsa, and his daughters were all married to Kamsa. 
when Lord Krishna killed Kamsa, they all went back to their father. They went back to Jarasandha. Jarasandha was furious. What? I will kill that Krishna. He, he thought to himself. He, and that was when they, he began attacking. He began attacking Mathura. But of course, he was defeated 17 times. And then the 18th time, then Krishna performed his Ranchor pastime. And Jarasandha thought, I've defeated him. Lord Krishna never killed Jarasandha. Although he could have killed him so many times, he never killed him. So Jarasandha, he had some piety in the sense that he was accustomed to give charity to Brahmanas. He knew that by giving charity to the Brahmanas, he would be greatly benefited. You know, people have that, a lot, of, many people know about that. They will give charity, but with material motivation. Ek paisa dega, dislak malega. Right? That's the mentality sometimes people have. Not very good mentality, but still, it's there all <coughs> over the world, not just in the Vedic culture. People think, I'm giving, what will I get? How much will you give back? The fr fruitive mentality. So Jarasandha was like that. He liked to give charity. And he knew that he benefited by giving charity. And so it happened, Lord Krishna came there with Bhima and Arjuna when Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to perform the Rajasuya Yagna, it was necessary that they should have all the other kings of the world supporting and accepting the supreme position of Maharaj Yudhisthira. And of course Jarasandha would never agree to that because Jarasandha was a very powerful king. As we heard, he put 20,000 kings in his prison. In those days, you know, kings, they, were, they didn't have huge kingdoms, you know. Maybe they had a village, some people had a few villages, some people had bigger kingdoms. But in India, in the past, there were many, many kings. And it was only in the recent times, they took away all the properties and they had everything taken back, put under the, the state, given to the government. So in the past there were many kings and Jarasandha was defeating them and arresting them, and taking their property, taking their wealth. And Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to do Rajasuya Yagna. So it was necessary that they had to defeat Jarasandha. So Bhima and Arjuna and Lord Krishna all went to see Jarasandha disguised as Brahmanas because they know Jarasandha respects the Brahmanas. And so they came there in the dress of Brahmanas and they requested charity. So Jarasandha thought, oh, he thought, these are interesting Brahmanas. <laughs> Brahmanas are usually skinny, weak people, but here's Bhima and Arjuna, you know, they're not little weaklings. And Brahmanas are by nature in Bhagavad Gita, they're described Vidya Vinaya Sampani. Vidya Vinaya, the, the characteristic of the Brahmana, learned and gentle. But these people, 
like Bhima and Arna, their voices are like thunder, you know, <laughs> because Kshatriyas, they have that Ishwara Bhav, they have that controlling power. You know, some people, when they speak to you, you just, <gasps> you know, you just freeze, you know, their voices are so powerful and they're so full of authority. They just take you by control. So Bhima and Arjuna, they're, they're like that, you know, they had that Ishwara Bhav. And Jarasan just think, these are Brahmanas and they're coming from... Anyway, all right, what charity do you want? And of course, they requested to fight. And so it, he said, well, fight. He said, oh, well, look, this one, Arjuna, is not strong enough. He won't give me a good fight. Kshatriyas like somebody who can give them a good fight, who will be their equal. They don't want to fight some weakling. And so Jarasandha said, this Arjuna, he's not powerful enough. He won't be a good fight. He won't be a good opponent for me. Not going to fight him. And he said, Krishna, I'm not going to fight him. He ran away from the battle the last time I fought him. So he's a, he's a coward, I'm not going to fight with him, but Bhim, he will be a good one to fight with. And so they fought together, Jarasand and Bhima, I think, how many days? 28 days or something? So many days they fought and nobody could win, but then Krishna gave the hint to Bhima how he could defeat Jarasandha, that Jara, he, he was joined by the witch Jara, joined by the witch Jara. His, he was born in two halves. And so at his birth, the mother thought, oh, this is terrible. What kind of child is this to have? And she left the two halves in the forest and they were found by a witch called Jara. And she joined the two halves together. So Lord Krishna, took up a twig and split it down the middle. And in this way he gave the clue to Bhima how he could defeat Jarasandha. So Bhima came forward and he took one leg and held the other leg with his foot. And while he was lifting one leg with the other foot being held, he ripped the body of Jarasandha right down the middle into two halves and through the two halves, <laughs> far away in opposite direction. So in this way Jarasandha was defeated, finally. Anyway, here the kings are describing their plight, that we're in this condition, why is it like this? We're good people. Of course, from the Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the verse which is well known by devotees. Lord Brahma describing how a devotee will think when they're in difficulties. Hmm? Yeah. Yes, Vendra Gopa Mata Vendra, oh, no, is it? What the, the, the verse, Tate Nukampam Sutsa Mikshamana Punjana Evatma Kritam Vipakam Rigvagva Pabir Vidhanamaste Chiveta Yo Mukti Pade Sadayaba Mukti Pade Sadayaba so Sadayabha becomes his rightful claim. One who accepts the difficulties which come upon him as reactions due to his past sins, but goes on with his devotional service. He continues to hear and chant. He continues, he doesn't stop. He doesn't think, oh, why am I suffering? Why is this happening to me? He thinks that Whatever's happening to me, they're reactions due to my past sins. And so, have to tolerate, go on with it. Go, and you go on performing devotional service and it becomes the rightful claim of that devotee to be liberated from material life. Sadaya Bhak. It's his rightful claim to inherit that kingdom of God, to go to the kingdom of God. Sadaya Bhakti, 
what do, if your father is a rich man, what do you have to do to inherit the property of your father? Right? Your father is a rich man, what do you have to do to inherit your father's property? You have to wait for your father to die. Right? Once the father leaves, then you inherit father's property. Right? becomes the claim. And so in the same way, one who is a devotee, one who will go on doing devotional service, tolerating all the difficulties, then that person, he is qualified to go back to Krishna, to be with Krishna. Hmm. And so the kings are saying that we have surrendered to you so one who surrendered to you free from all sins. Of course, their surrender is very motivated. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes four kinds of people who come to Krishna. Uh, right? There's four kinds of pious people. That, uh, uh, that there's the one who is, they all have sukriti, and one is in distress, like here, these kings, right? The four reasons why people surrender to Krishna. Someone's in distress, someone's in search of wealth, someone's in uh, just curious, and someone else is in looking for knowledge. So here we have the kings who are arrested by Jarasan, they're in distress, right? Let us out, you know, we want to get out of the prison. They're in distress. And they're saying, we have surrendered to Krishna, we should get out. <laughs> well, of course, it takes some time for the karma to finish. It's not everything happened. Okay, I've surrendered immediately, okay, you're changed, everything karma's all gone. It will take some time for the karma to be removed. Not immediate. Prabhupada gives the example, the electric fan. You have an electric fan and you turn off the fan, but the fan will still rotate because it has some momentum. It will continue to revolve. It's not finished rotating. It's going to keep rotating. So our karma, our reactions are like that, that we have some stockpile of sins, right? We have some, we must, we must all have some kind of sins, maybe not from this life, but from your previous life, because you've taken birth in this world, right? We've taken a material body, we've come in this world, so, if we, if we didn't have any sins, we would have gone back to Godhead. But because we have some karma, we've come back, we've come here into this world. Of course, you have a good birth, because you're born in a family of devotees. A family of devotees. That, but still, some karma to be removed. Right? Although you're in the family of devotees from birth and in this lifetime never did any sin previous lifetime there was some karma there brought you back into this world but in the family of devotees so it's a good birth but now you have to make this your last birth right don't take birth again don't come back again Mm. Those who are devotees, when they have a, a child, they should think like that. That this child will not take birth again. This will be their last birth. Right? It's your last birth. So, we have some karma, stockpile of sinful reactions there. So, by surrendering to Krishna, they're removed, but will take, just take some time to exhaust all the, the karma. Not that 
spontaneously it will all happen one moment. So we have to be patient and we have to be very steadfast in our devotional service that we will go on and we will tolerate everything. We will tolerate all the difficulties. Hmm. And we see nice examples in our scriptures how different people tolerated adverse conditions. There's a similar example in the Chaitanya Bhagwat. It tells about how Haridas Thakur, when he was arrested, he was taken to jail and he was put in the prison house with the other prisoners. And the other prisoners, they saw that Haridas Thakur was a saintly person. And so they asked him, Oh, Thakur, please bless us. So Haridas Thakur said, Oh yes, I bless you that you will remain as you are. <laughs> and he said, Ha! Ah, no, 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 you know, that's not the blessing we want. He said, I bless you, you will remain as you are. They were in the prison. You see, Haridas was bought, put in the prison. The prisoners are asking him, give us blessings. He said, I bless you, may you remain as you are. They said, oh, oh no, we don't want that blessing. But Haridas said, no, this is a very good blessing, because now you are in the prison house. You have no thought of sense gratification. You cannot think about material enjoyment. You're here in the prison house. So it's very good for you. You're in this condition. You have no more thought of enjoying the material world. So it's very good. As soon as you go out from the prison, then you'll think again material enjoyment, you think about all kinds of sense gratification. So better you stay in the prison. So blessed you, may you remain as you are. So they were not too happy to get that blessing. But that is the blessing. Just like we were telling yesterday about Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord Chaitanya was having kirtan and Srivas Anga. We heard this morning also, today is the disappearance of Srivas Thakur. So Lord Chaitanya was going to Srivas Thakur's house for kirtan. And there was this one Brahmana, he wanted to come. But this Brahmana was a very nasty, materialistic person. They thought, no, no, we don't want... Lord Chaitanya had not opened the, the Sankirtan to everyone. It was not public yet. Later it became public. But the Kirtans and Srivas Angam were private affairs. Just for the devotees. When it's the devotees, then the atmosphere is very pure and powerful. Right? Just like when you have your Radha Desh Mellows, you know, you have all the devotees, you have very powerful atmosphere. And so similarly, Lord Chaitanya was having these kirtans in the Shiva Sangha, powerful atmosphere. This Brahmana said, I want to come, I want to see. Lord Chaitanya said, no, sorry, <laughs> we don't want you to come. So the Brahmana became angry, if I cannot come, then I curse you. And he took his Brahmin thread, he broke his Brahmin thread. I curse you, you will never enjoy material life. And Lord Chaitanya, Haribo, very nice, right? That's a good curse, that you will never enjoy material life, right? Okay? Yeah. Happy? Yeah? Good? Yes. So, later, a short while later, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he left home, 
he never enjoyed material life. So, uh, we see in Srimad Bhagavatam, other people also got cursed, like Chitraketu Maharaj was cursed by Mother Parvati because of his joking words with Lord Shiva. Chitraketu was cursed by Mother Parvati that you should become a sudra, you should become a demon. And so Chitraketu took birth as an asura. He became Vritasura. Vrita, one who is spread everywhere, a huge, ferocious demon. But he was a devotee. Because whatever devotional service we've done, we never lose the benefit of that. Devotional service is eternally benefit. I wish we had money like that in the bank, right? It would always stay with us. You know, you get some money, it goes, you know. You have to always think how to get more money, <laughs> the money goes. So. But devotional service is eternal, it's never exhausted. Neha bhikrama na shosti pratyava yo vidyate. A little, in this endeavor, there's no loss or diminution. And a little advancement made saves us from the greatest danger. So devotional service is eternal benefit. It's in our spiritual bank account. So Chitra Ketu had done a lot of devotional service. He was so, so powerful that he could go even to Lord Shiva's abode and he could see Lord Shiva. And he, he was like a friend with Lord Shiva. They were like friends. And but he got cursed to become an Asura. But he never forgot his devotion. He never forgot it. We had this one devotee in India. His parents didn't like that he had become a devotee. They didn't want him to be a Hare Krishna. So they had him kidnapped by people and they gave him some drugs that he would forget everything. So, he forgot everything except for Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, it's a true story. He couldn't, he couldn't ch stop chanting. He forgot everything else, but he couldn't stop chanting Hare Krishna mantra. So Chitra Ketu was cursed to become Vritasura but he couldn't forget devotion. Even though he's fighting Indra, even though he's coming to attack the dem demigods, he couldn't forget that he was a devotee. And of course, it was his way, it was the arrangement of the Lord that he would go through that body to relieve him of all the karma he had. And then all his karma was finished, he could go back to Godhead. And so Frida Sura actually knew, he thought, well, as soon as I get rid of this body, I'll be able to go back to Godhead. So he was happy to suffer. He accepted the sufferings of being in the Asura body and having one arm cut off by Indra and then another arm cut off. But he he didn't give up, he kept it, he thought, I have to fight, I have to, yeah, I'm here to fight. And he, and he went and he, he fought Indra and at one point he swallowed Indra, but Indra couldn't be harmed because Indra had the Narayana Kavacha and he had his Brajra weapon and he cut his way out of the stomach of Vritasura. And then he cut off Vritasura's head. Well, but while, when Vridasura swallowed Indra, he thought, oh, I've defeated him. So he thought, okay, I've finished fighting. And he sat down and he took samadhi. And while he was in samadhi, then Indra cut his way out of the stomach of Vridasura and cut off his head. And it said it took one year to cut off his head. <laughs> and that was with Indra's weapon, the Brajra weapon. So... 
Anyway, that was the karma. Vritasura, he just wanted to get rid of his karma because he thought, when my karma is finished, then I can go to be with Lord Sankarshan. He was a devotee of Lord Sankarshan. So we should also understand that whatever sufferings we have to endure in the material world, that actually it's the arrangement of Krishna. <coughs> And sometimes we will say, actually a devotee doesn't suffer karma. Devotees don't have karma. That we have surrendered to Krishna, we've taken shelter of a devotee of Krishna, we've accepted initiation from them, and the karma is all, should be all relieved. Does it mean no more suffering? Oh, there will still be suffering. There will still be difficulties will be there. But a devotee will tolerate them. He will accept that it, it's Krishna's plan for us. It's not, it's not just only reactions from our past karma, but it could, can be Lord Krishna's plan. Lord Krishna wants to see how steadfast we will be in our performance of devotional service. How serious are we? to commit ourselves to devotional service, that we will tolerate all the difficulties. Tatenukampam susamich. So this verse is very relevant, that devotees, when we're in difficulties, when we're having hard times, we should remember this verse. And we should be determined to go on despite everything that the difficulties are only temporary. Like the winter and summer season, happiness and distress. They come and go. So the difficulties come and go. They're not eternal. A devotee will tolerate and go on with them. And despite so many difficulties, he will continue his devotional activity. He will continue hearing and chanting. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that the difficulties which we undergo in devotional service are the greatest pleasure of a devotee. An easy-going life is not good for devotees. Just to live comfortably and have no problem, that is not very good. That's not uh, what a devotee wants. A devotee wants to face difficulties. He's ready to confront all the difficulties because it will help him to take more shelter of Lord Krishna. Queen Kunti prays for difficulties. Vipada shantutachasvat tatra tatra jagat garo bhavato darshanam yajyat apunar bhava darshanam I wish that all these vipada, all these calamities will come again and again. Kunti had a lot of calamities in her life. She lost her husband when her children were very young. And Madri also left, the co-wife also left her children with Kunti to take care of. So Kunti had to bring up the five children by herself. And then there were so many threats on the life of her children. How Duryodhana, uh, the sons of Dhritarashtra headed by Duryodhana, they tried in so many ways to kill the Pandavas. And then the house was set on fire, the house of Shilak they were in was all set, set on fire. So many difficulties, one after another, the exile, 12 years exile, one year incognito. So, so many troubles. And Kunti, is, is she lamenting? Oh, why I suffered so much? Is Kunti lament? She's saying, let all these difficulties happen again and again. Because the more there are difficulties, the more I take shelter of Lord Krishna. And taking shelter of Lord Krishna means there will be no more birth and death. So that is the thinking of the devotee. 
that they don't run away from difficulties. We're ready to face the challenges and go on with our devotional service. We have to be willing to face the difficulties. There will be difficulties. We have taken birth. We have a material body. Material body means miseries, means difficulties, old age, disease and death. These things are inevitable. It's not very pleasant. We don't like it. You cannot avoid it. We have to face it. We have to tolerate and we have to continue to go on with our devotional service despite all the difficulties. So that is the nature of the devotee. Here we see these kings who are in the prison. They, they're like a karma mishrabhatas. They're not pure devotees. Lord Krishna described the four kinds of people who come to him. They're not pure devotees. They come with some motive. But we want to come to pure devotion, not just karma mishra bhakti, we want shuddha bhakti. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma janavritam anu koyena krishna nushilanam bhakti uttamam. The highest devotion is that devotion which is done without any desire for fruit of activity or philosophical speculation and it is performed constantly for the service of Krishna. So Rupa Goswami describes devotional service as like that, pure devotion, not mixed devotion, not desire with the fruit of desire. Of course you have some material desires they can be purified in course of time. Just keep chanting, stay in the association of devotees and continue to hear and chant. And gradually we'll see these material desires diminish. Certainly Dhruva Maharaj had material desire. He wanted a kingdom. He'd gone to the forest. He wanted a kingdom. But when he got it, when the Lord came there and, and granted his wish to give him the kingdom, he didn't want it. He said, no, no, I, I don't want it anymore. I'm happy. He said, I came here looking for pieces of broken glass and I found the most beautiful jewel. So these material desires are like broken glass. No value. Just trouble. But if you get Krishna consciousness, that is the beautiful jewel. And Gajendra was in distress. The elephant Gajendra was in great distress. He got freed. The Lord came and killed the crocodile. Gajendra said, hey, why you killed him? I prayed to you. You should have liberated me. I'm still here in this elephant body. You should have liberated me from this elephant body. Why you killed him? <laughs> so, we have to know what to pray for. Okay, any questions? Comments? Well, it's in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah, I have seen devotees chant it regularly when they're in great difficulties. They may recite Narayana Kavacha. Hmm? Yeah, you can chant. You have some very difficult situation, you can chant. Of course, you can get also a lot of benefit by chanting the Maha Mantra, but you can also chant Narayana Kavacha if you like. It's also devotional service. 
not pure devotion, <laughs> usually. Some purpose is there, right? We're in distress, maybe have some problem. So, take shelter of Lord Narayan. He can destroy the problem. It can certainly give protection by remembering Krishna, remembering Lord Narayan can protect you from the, the enemies. Yes? So the kings, they were also in distress. The kings, they also had their motivation. But as far as I understand, because Krishna was waiting a little bit, they came to the realization that actually this is not what they really wanted. They wanted to have Dasha of Krishna. No? Oh, they wanted to have Dasha of Krishna. They realized that, that actually that was their real desire. They wanted to engage in devotional service. Because Krishna waited, he went first to Yudhisthira, then, then only he came back to kill Jarasandha. And meanwhile, they were praying and praying, and they got purified from the prayers. So they realized actually, no, we don't, we don't care to be in the prison, we just want to remember Krishna. Okay. Yeah, but but here in the purport, they're saying that 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 they're bewildered, you know, why they're suffering. So later on, they became pure. Yeah. We we had a class from Burija, and mm. it was explaining it like that. Why? Because the messenger came to ask for help, and Krishna said, "Yes, I will be coming." But then he went to all over the place, <laughs> like three months or so before he came to the kings. He was and letting the kings something. get purified. So, yeah, because then by that time, they realized that, you know, that we are suffering because of our own uh, activities, not Jerusalem, it's just an instrument. And now we just want devotional service. Because then Krishna has liberated them, and he said, so go back to your kingdom. And he said, no, no, we don't want, we just want to serve you now. <laughs> so, uh, Twenty thousand kings. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Very nice. Okay, any other comments? Okay, so we'll finish here. Thank you, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki.